Good evening. The state television company of Western Armenia represents the most important events of these days. Today is broadcast. In memory of Nazareth Zermakishian, winter fairy tale of Western Armenia, President of Russia travels to Syria to meet with Bashar Assad. The Financial Times has listed Armenia as the number one destination in 2020. On December 31, 2019, a prominent national public figure, great patriot and father of glorious family, my noble and caring elder brother Nazareth Zermakishian passed away. Nazareth Zermakishian was born on October 6, 1926 in the family of Ran Zermakishian, a close relative of Yervan Zermakishkhanlian, who was a victim of Turkish Yatalan. Ran Zermakishian was born in 1818 in Constantinople and since childhood have experienced the horrors of violence by the Turkish authorities against Armenians. The Armenian massacres organized by Sultan Abdul Hamid in the 1890s left mark on him. Ran was taken to the Turkish army and thousands of Armenian men at the beginning of World War II first. They did not have weapons, were not provided with uniforms or food. They were used as a carriers of ammunition and food. Many of the soldiers died from hunger. Hanant was a teen man by profession and it saved him from death. The Turkish commander needed a lamp. Hanant prepared the lamp for which he received two bread from the commander, and he gave this bread to sick Armenian soldiers. The Turkish commander took Hrant with him to Aleppo front. After staying here for a year, Hrant managed to return to Constantinople. He took with him two Armenian orphans who survived the massacres. There was no place in the train to Constantinople and Hrant and his orphans were have to go on the roof of one of the vacants. Because of the unbearable heat at one of the stations, Turkish soldiers forced Hrant and two orphan children to give up their place. Hrant somehow managed to get into the one of the vacants with the kids. When the train entered to the tunnel during the night, Turkish soldiers on the roof did not notice the danger and none of them survived. In Constantinople, Hrant met Lusaber and married her. Then they left for Romania, where Nazareth was born. On the beginning of World War II, they returned to Constantinople. In 1946, Hrant Zermak was one of the first to express his wish to return to Soviet Armenia. However, the Turkish authorities did not allow Armenian families to leave. Hrant died in 1966. Before his death, he told his children, don't forget Armenia. After the death of their father, the Zermak moved to Switzerland where in 1972 Nazareth's mother Elisabeth died. Nazareth Sirmakishan never forgot his father's message, don't forget Armenia, and with all his activities he always remained true to it. Nazareth Sirmakishan was known for his comprehensive national, social, charity, patriotic activities in the diaspora. There is a lot to be written about his activities and many facts can be mentioned, including organization of Ad to Armenian Artsakh. Nazareth Zermakishian's work with Harutun Helvejan and Hovanes Chilinkirian in supporting the heroes of the secret army is also a great achievement. He has been recognized as a broad-minded analyst in diaspora and Armenia. Zermakishian's historical analysis is attractive, warm, passionate, original, bold, revealing, calling for unity around Armenia. He called on all Armenians of all countries come together around Mother Armenia and support it. Zermakishian's diligence proves that he was always ready for fight for the sake of the Armenians, always against evil and betrayal of national interests. Even today, the following words written by him in 1998 that sound like a message I find it necessary to remember. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Sir Makishan wrote, Russia will live through the worst times of its history. Therefore, this temporary weakening should not cause the fraternal and strategic alliance of Armenia and Russia to suffer. Let's not believe in it. And thereafter, he firmly demanded not to make our centuries-old friendship and relationship with Russia subject for problem. On another occasion, remembering the demolition of the status of Pushkin and Chekhov and other prominent figures of Russian culture in Yerevan, Sermakeshian wrote, Why was it necessary to start an anti-Russian policy against our centuries-old friend, great companion and rescuer? For what? It was just betrayal. We are not ungrateful nation. This is a wise message indeed, and with the message, Sermakishan has a special and worthy place next to the advocates of the great friendship of the Armenian and Russian people, like Israel or Yehovanes Lazarian, Hofse Parhutian, Nerses Arshaketsi, Khachatur Abovian, Mikhail Nalbantian, Loris Melikov, Andrani Kozanian, Komitas, Hovanes Tumanian, Alexander Miasnikian, Hovanes Bagramian, and the other greats. As an Armenian, as an Armenian historian, I have the right to estimate his above-mentioned messages like this. 
One of the great features of Nazareth Ramakishan's work is that he talked to readers about what is needed today, what concerns them, from the most precious dreams, personal concerns to national issues. All this testified to his broad and deep thinking delicacy and talent. Zemakeshan was also a true psychologist. Sometimes there was an angry challenge in his speech. Sometimes his words were full of blatant nakedness and sometimes with mild humor. Zemakeshan's diligence is characterized by light and kindness. I, I had the opportunity to meet with him in different circumstances. To hear his words, he has always shown himself to be a true and wise citizen. He fought without pity against the Armenian people and the enemies of mankind in general, striking them with his wisdom. Years ago, during one of our conversations, Nazareth Ramakishan said very concerned, I have always said my Armenia, but now I have to say it, such Armenia is not mine. I have been thinking a lot about those words. If such a thoughtful, wise man like Nazareth Ramakishan comes up with such words, it means a lot of things in our country do not correspond to his ideas. Plato, a prominent philosopher of ancient Greece, has the following words. To supreme power in the city must belong to the wise, and it has become common in our country that every fool in power finds himself wise. And then, blind is the power that goes in an impassable way that spits on the common people, on poverty. That is, it actually spits on country and it is why it is deaf to the misery of the people. Such power and politicians are shameless and immoral. Like Plato's Demarcations criticize all those officials and politicians who are notorious for their ignorance, who ruthlessly plundered our country, who did not recruit for our homeland, Armenia. Sermakeshian wrote, isn't it the primary and essential duty of the president to find ways to contribute to economic growth and prosperity of his people? In this regard, Levantar Petrosian, because of his weak description, could do nothing. Further considering the destruction of Armenian industrial enterprises as one of the notorious and harmful activities of Levantar Petrosian, Sermakeshian described it as a criminal act, and sadly noted that because of it, hundreds of thousands of people were left unemployed and the country remained in a state of disrepair, as a result of one of the half million people emigrated overseas. Meanwhile, we thought we would start a repatriation of Armenia with independence. This dreadful and blameworthy act left the country in desperate and the nation in despair. And the unfortunate thing is that the Republican Party that came to the power after the malicious government was led by the same ideology and continued the same policy. In this regard, I recall one of our most recent conversations with Nazareth Ramakishan. Our young revolutionaries have correctly understood the importance of restoring and strengthening national solidarity and national unity that are paramount importance to our people. They realize that those who invaded our national unity and solidarity have done more harm to our people than foreign invaders. He predicted that the time will come and he will say my Armenia again. Now is the time, his optimism is justified. This is evidenced by his positive evaluation of 2018 report connected with the events of Armenia during spring. As the saying goes, if a man has stolen once, then he is a small thief. If he has stolen twice, then he is an average thief. If he has stolen three times, then he is a big thief. And if he has stolen four times, then he is a politician. The same is true of lying. And the speech of Nazareth Ramakishan, a patriotic analyst, differs from a speech of a political scientist on his truth and a purity. With the help of his own words, he brought culture to people, uniting us all with his own history and his own consciousness. The proverb says, when the sky becomes cloudy, the peasant rushes to save the harvest. Now that in our country and around the world are undergoing unprecedented changes that are accompanied by various legal conflicts, when there are forces that want to accumulate thunderstorms in the sky of Armenia, Nazareth Ramakishan called on staying together as a nation and advice. It is now possible to buy and sell what was previously banned – conscience, heroes, talent, beauty, women, children, poetry, music, and sometimes even native land. At the same time, every year the price of life decreases and the price of things goes up. It is time to ungrateful ones. Nazareth Makishan could not remain indifferent to all this and fought against evil habits of our country. Dear compatriot, such person was Nazareth Makishan, a great patriot, philanthropic, good-natured, wise, very precious and highly respected man for us. I bow before the memory of my elder brother Nazareth Makishan. I wish patience to all the members of his honorable family led by beloved Vartan, and I am sure that they will continue his work with great honor and great responsibility. The memory of Nazareth Sermakeshian will always remain in the grateful hearts of me and my family. Vladimir Gebor, Petrosian, Doctor of Historical Sciences. 
The coming of 2020 did not hinder the harsh winter to keep the whole territory of Western Armenia under its control. The snow has covered almost all the area, making traffic impassable in some areas. Many settlements are completely disconnected from central areas. Special equipment is used to carry out intensive snow cleaning works to open the roads. In spite of the difficulties that have been encountered, the white has spread beauty and mysterious purity in the area, filling the souls of people with hope, faith and optimism. Russian President Vladimir Putin made a surprise visit to Syria on Tuesday to meet with his Syrian counterpart Bashar al-Assad and several Russian military officials. According to the government source in Damascus, Putin met with President Assad at a Russian base in the capital where they observed the Russian armed forces for a short while before beginning their meeting. Putin's visit to Syria on Tuesday marks the second time since the start of the Syrian conflict that he has traveled to the war-torn nation. Previously, Putin made a similar visit before flying to neighboring Turkey to meet with his Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan. The Financial Times have picked the hottest destinations to visit this year. According to the publication's website, the number of tickets booked in Armenia has increased by 100% compared to last year. The main draw for visitors is the country's extraordinary collection of medieval monasteries and churches, many of them sat among dramatic mountains. Yagart Monastery, for example, was cut into the rock of the Upper Azad Valley and was completed in the 13th century. It is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, as are the monasteries of Hakpat and Sanahin. Mount Ararat with from the Armenian capital Yerevan and the wine lands are also fascinating. The State Symphony Orchestra of Armenia, under the direction of artistic director and principal conductor Sergei Sampatian, has recorded two of the original orchestral works of Komitas, Memory and Forest Night. The recordings are made by the Public Radio Recording Studio. The aforementioned works will be kept in Public Radio Gold Fund. The initiative of the State Symphony Orchestra of Armenia is dedicated to the 150th anniversary of Komitas. Now, let us represent to your attention a song by Hasmik Papian, Order. Page of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.